but will now be spread out to three and a half years. Vivek Canel asking me, can Nepal defend about 190 plus? I think they should get more than that. Can they defend it? That's the question. Half day on the Friday. Local time, 5.20 p.m. Sun starting to dip down towards the mountains. We saw the floodlights come on very late in the American innings yesterday. But the PNG being really quick through their overs today, so no signs of that yet. Good bowling right into the block hole. That's the difference. If you can get it into the block hole, don't give Karen KC the opportunity to show all that power that he has and use those long levers. Good batting from Karen Casey. More questions flooding in. Just going to take a few more of those before we'll come back to them in the second innings. This one from Manny Shrestra asking me, will Rohit Powdell get his century? Well, if he's still there at the end, he will. RP batter, batter I asking me, as we do get to the end of the 44th over. I wonder if that one was a five ball over. Don't think it was. 44 gone, 194 for six. Yeah, so to go back to RP Batterai's question. As Vanua finds the block hole brilliantly. He's asking me, why do I think Nepal is struggling with the strike rotation? Good question. I just believe a little bit of lack of match experience. Remember, I haven't played a lot of international cricket of late. It's a big step up from the domestic stuff that would have been played in the PM Cup back there in Kathmandu. Big swing and a miss. That's where Karen Casey can just lose his shape. He goes straight down the ground and holds his shape. Doesn't try to overhit. He's so, so good. But that time, he was looking definitely to go through the leg side a bit too agricultural. Lovely message here from Nitish Kadiwada. Taking the day off to watch Nepal play. Really excited for the upcoming match. That's your commentary. Thank you. Slower ball from Vanua. He says, we love your commentary from our beautiful country in Nepal. Well, right back at you. Love the country of Nepal. Been lucky enough to go there seven or eight times now. And it really is a magical place. Kathmandu Valley. People are what make any country and that's what makes Nepal so special. So Powell, 76 not out. Will he have time to get up towards that 100? Doing the right thing here, just punching the ball around, giving Karen KC the strike. Really selfless innings. Making sure he's putting the team first. He's not going to mind if he gets that 100, if Nepal can get up to a competitive total here. My timing from Karen KC. It was the last five overs really where USA went big yesterday. Just wonder, will there be a little bit of mental scarring? We haven't seen any sign of Gaudi Toka with the ball today. And I suppose the reason for that is because of the fact he went for so many yesterday KC is going to call through for the quick single he'll keep the strike 45 overs gone five remain after this there 198 for six <laughs> So, what is 
It's the one ODI century in Nepal's short-lived ODI history. That, of course, belongs to Paris Kadke. It's short of the man. Sese Bao. Karen KC held his shape after he hit the ball because I think he thought he was going to be out caught in the deep, but he didn't get it well enough. Yeah, it was only really a check shot. He pulled out of it, didn't he? Sese Bao does really well. Wasn't going to be able to take the catch. Yeah, Paris Kadka became the first ODI Centurion against UAE back in January 2019. That will be wide outside the off stump. Since then, 115 made off 109 balls. Nobody else has done it, so Mohit Powell is in with the chance of it, but he's going to need 23 off the remaining five overs, and he's not getting a huge amount of the strike, although he's on strike now. Just been operating in singles of late. Two hundred brought up now in the forty-sixth over. No foot movement. That's probably where Karen Casey struggles a bit when it's just back of a length. If it's too full or too short, he'll punish you. Just there, no foot movement and not able to make any contact. Projected score up to 220 now. That's the highest it's been. And rate hovering around four and a half and over. And that's where he loves it. That's maybe the biggest of the entire day it clatters into the construction site the top tier the very top of it karen casey you cannot bowl length to him wasn't quite into the slot but over his favorite area over long up can't even keep it in shot that's how high that one went an almighty strike down the ground for a gigantic wow energy drink power six Brilliant batting from Karen Casey. It's giving Nepal a real chance in this game. Follows up the Wow Energy Drink Power 6 with a single. Down to Teravan. What a strike that was. I think that one might have been bigger than anything Jaskaran Malhotra produced for us yesterday at this very ground. He produced it just as the floodlights have come on. Sun creeping ever closer towards the Muscat Mountains. We will review those floodlights in a moment. Flat batted by Powdle, but protection out at long on. So we'll just be the single. Four overs remain, 24 deliveries left. Nepal 209 for six. Yeah, there are those floodlights, those brand new LED floodlights that have been installed. into this ground here. They were only installed a couple of weeks ago, used for the very first time in international cricket yesterday. As Chad Soper is going to come in and bowl the odd over that Papua New Guinea need. 
And the reason that they need that odd over is because Ravu and Vanua couldn't finish out. It's not going to be Soper. Ravu still has two overs left. He may bowl the two from the Well, Emmer at end of the ground, but from this pavilion end for the moment, it's Chad Soper. Doesn't have great pace to work with, so you're going to have to rely upon probably some cutters, but the off cutter could be a risk. It is the off cutter, but just gets it short enough back of a length, not into the hitting arc of Karen KC. Yeah, real surprise not to see Gaudi Toki even bowl a few overs today. Driven straight back to Soper. Paolo needs 20. I think he's running out of time. It's only 21 balls left in the match. Hasn't found many boundaries in this innings. Just two to dish on fiber net fours. Gonna try and get one here, but he won't. Good work in the deep from Sese Bow. Anticipation there, you want to see that on your screen. As soon as he shaped to play the pull shot, Bow must have made three or four yards across to his right, knowing he was going to be trying to pull it to the vacant gap between long on and deep mid wicket. <laughs> Does get back for a second though. Starting to feel the heat as well. Is Robert Pedal. Needs 18. Yeah, just two dish home fiber net boundary fours to go with the three WoW Energy Drink Power Sixes that he's hit. And he's going to need some assistance here. Please don't underestimate just how hot it is. I'm feeling the heat and I'm just sitting in the commentary box. Rowett Powdle has been out there for a long time. But let's take a look at this ground. This was filmed a couple of nights ago. Oman A were playing Oman B in a practice match just to test those lights, I believe, on the Wednesday night before we had the first ever international. And what a sight they are. This ground, in five or six weeks' time, will be hosting the T20 World Cup group stages. And isn't it going to be a majestic sight indeed? You can see there the first of those stands across the far side of the ground will be the first of, I think, four of those stands, each holding 672. And then the construction that Karen KC clattered the ball into on the right of your shot, that's going to be the VIP hospitality, the media center. Take all the camera gantries as well. But it is warm work here in the commentary box. So I wasn't lying. It's hot stuff. And to say the least, I think it's 35 degrees, 34 degrees local now, but I'm trying to do my best to keep you informed as to what's going on. So big hello to you. Back to the action. If we can pack a new guinea for being with us. It's been a big, big effort to put this broadcast on and really appreciate all your support. Down the track, that's a lovely shot. No fielders there, that's going to run away. Just a couple of bounces. A dish home fiber net boundary, and it comes from the bat of Karen Casey. It's a gem of a cameo of an innings. It's his career ODI best. He's got 31 not out, 47 gone. Okay, here we go, here's a of those drone shots from the nights ago and keep your eyes very closely on this one, hopefully we'll be able to get it all in because watch what happens, we're just getting ready to play that practice match under floodlights but have a look at what happens as the camera starts to pan up, hopefully it's going to pan up quick enough. 
There's the floodlights, one of the four floodlight pylons that surrounds this ground. Watch now. The camera pans up and reveals those beautiful Muscat mountains behind you, the town of Al Amarat. Come back live to the action now. Come back to that. Into the block hole. Powell gets it away for a single. But yeah, we're almost almost in a bowl here. Surrounded by beautiful hills. You've got to take a sort of 15 to 20 minute drive from the old town of Rui up towards Al Amarat. And I can't think of too many more spectacular settings for cricket than here. Obviously, Kathmandu itself and Bakara, the grounds there, certainly give it good competition. Vanu has had a change of ends. He's going to come around the wicket to Karen Casey, who's going to smash him down the ground for yet another six. We've seen a lot of sixes over the course of the last 24 hours. That's another Wow Energy drink, pair of six. Karen Casey. Moves to 37. It's been a brilliant knock. You quite simply cannot bowl length to Karen KC because he's going to pump you out of the ground. Come over the wicket and Karen KC is going to play him over the offside. It won't go for the six. This time it won't carry all the way, but it will go for a dish home fiber net boundary four. It's Karen KC that's changing the game. Always does. You asked me who was going to be the X Factor player. I said it could be Karen KC. This is a food man do moment of the match here. Six four from this over, ten from the first two deliveries. Of the forty-eighth over. Paul eyeing 250 plus all of a sudden. He's chopped down over 10 from the first two deliveries. Time. Already 12 runs from the over. Of the 48th over. And Paul eyeing 250 plus all of a sudden. He's chopped down over 10 from the first two deliveries. Already 12 runs from the over. Of the 48th over. And Paul eyeing 250 plus all of a sudden. He's chopped down over 10 from the first two deliveries. Already 12 runs from the over. Runs into the Off offside. He's going to look to try and get back for two, but Karen KC sends him sudden. back. You would have thought that he's chopped down. Over. Would have been the right idea to maybe get back for the second and keep Karen KC. On strike for the 49th over, but KC will probably look for the single here. Would have been the right idea to. Can't get it. Maybe get crucial off for the second. The and will be on strike. Keep Karen KC. Two overs remain. 2 3 1 for six. On strike for the 49th over, but KC will probably look for the single here. Would have been the right idea to. Yeah, here's more drone shots this time. You can see USA training on the ground, second academy ground, but then look at the reveal, look at those floodlights, look at how bright they are, it's like playing in daylight really, that was the practice match on the Wednesday night, and as the camera will pan up, it'll just show you a bit more of those floodlight pylons and the Oman cricket flags flying proudly over the ground, there's the hills in the background, back live now, Howell gets that into the leg side, but only time for a single. You can see the sunset there, lovely shot from the side. I'm gonna bring you that sunset, I'd say, at the end of this over, because it is really spectacular over the far side of the ground. Karen Casey is putting on a display. No time in there. Yeah, look at this sunset. It is absolutely majestic. We've been treated almost every evening we've been here. So just sheer beauty. Watch this as the camera zooms out and just reveals some of the ground. It is spectacular, isn't it? Very lucky to be here. Beautiful scenes of Muscat Oman. Back live with the action now, Chad Soper. 
top edge. I think Karen KC is going to perish. Well bowled by Chad Soper, bowled into the wicket. And Karen KC could only find the top edge. I was looking up the fastest ever. Nepal ODI 50s. KC was just 2 4 short of that, but he's not going to get there. Tried to club it down the ground, and all he could do was hit it into the air where the skipper Asadoa Valla takes an easy catch. He gets a pat on his back for his trouble. Karen KC from the bowler, Chad Soper. He's got his second wicket. A great knock from Karen KC. He's gone for 42. Nepal now 232 for seven. So the scoop shot's attempted and it's going to be back to back wickets. The innings that has promised so much is going to end with a scoop shot short of 100. We won't have a second. ODI Centurion, Rohit Powdle was on strike because the batsman had crossed and Chad Soper is going to be on a hat-trick. A really nice tumbling catch from Tony Ora. It's been a great knock from the youngster. I think the second highest in Nepali history going for 86 from 123 deliveries, two fours and three sixes. He's gone. Two wickets and two balls for PNG. It's two, three, two for eight. So Sandy Plamachani in, but not on strike, as Bikram Saab is, and no hat-trick for Chad Soper. All happening in the latter stage of this innings. Hello. Nepal were promising to look north of 250 the way they were going, with the pyrotechnics provided by Karen KC. But as Tony Ora took that, quite simple. Marvel pipe, safe duck, safe catch. It's been the end of Rohit Powdle. No contact made by Lamachani. Through to the keeper. So 49 overs gone. Nepal 233 for eight. Yeah, more beautiful drone shots. We might see if we can bring you the ones in the second innings. We won't bring them to you now as we run out of time. Showing you just how amazing these floodlights are. But just the one over remains. Can Nepal magic away up to 250? They need a big final over to do so. It's going to be Norman Vanua to bowl it. Vikram Saab on strike. Bold him. Papua New Guinea are ending really strongly here. Good full Yorker. Just off the inside edge, back into middle stump. No real celebrations from Vanua. But PNG have done a very effective job at the tail end of this innings. Maybe a little bit of in-swing as well. I'm not sure if that was reverse swing. But three wickets in just five deliveries has tilted the momentum back towards Papua New Guinea. Nepal are in a big game here. 
Bikram Sobs, second innings in international cricket. He has his first run. He's gone for one. Nepal, two, three, three for nine. Sushan Bari, the last man for Nepal, and this innings has petered out after a really good partnership between Powdell and Karen KC. We've put on 66 in just eight overs, probably the partnership of the innings so far. They've just collapsed in a heap. And Sushan Bari drives that back, and Sandeep Lamachani's going to be run out. That's going to be the end of the innings. Lamachani was desperate to get on to strike, but it was just driven back to Vanua. And Vanua flicked it with one hand straight onto the stumps, and Lamachani couldn't get back. So what a tame end to the innings. They were 232 for six. They're 233 all out. Look at this. He didn't even really attempt to get back Lamachani because Vanua flicked it back in a flash. Caught him short. A smile from Vanua. Lamachani won't be happy with that. He's gone for a duck from just one delivery. That's going to close out the innings. Barry will end up with none not out. Vanua has a run out to go alongside his two wickets. Good comeback for PNG's leading ODI wicket taker.